You know what? I'll begin. I have been an employee of Planned Parenthood for eight years. I am queer. I am non-binary. I have had two abortions. My first abortion was a medication abortion in my early 20s, which I consider to be one of the best decisions I have ever made for myself. My second abortion was a second trimester abortion due to a non-viable pregnancy. I find today's decision and the rhetoric that is around it to be harmful to my existence and my body. I am sorry to all of you that are experiencing harm and pain today, but I am requesting of all of you to commit to yourselves, commit to each other, and find solidarity in this moment. Please, please, be good to one another. We have an extremely long and difficult road ahead of us, but we have opportunity with this road to build it better this time. I'm going to request again, does anyone want to speak? Thank you. Uh, how do I, I haven't done this. Is this the button right there? Nope, you just go into it, it's on. Yeah. I remember the day that I had scheduled an abortion at the Women's Health Center on North Ave okay, some years ago. And we got there and it was locked down by protesters. No fucking way are you going to keep anyone from taking care of their bodies and their families. And I will say that till the day I die. Thank you all for coming in. I'm going to request again. Does anyone want to speak? No, you can yell into it. Um, hi. So this is really weird for me. I'm out of state. I'm from Syracuse, New York. I came here today because I'm up here at my family camp on vacation and I didn't want to miss anything. Normally I march in Syracuse, but today I'm here. Um, I'm gonna, this is really, hi. So, I wanted to tell a little story real quick because my grandfather, uh, was the town doctor in a little tiny town up north near Canada, in Franklin, if anybody you knows where that is. And my mother was a nurse, came out of Burlington University, Vermont. And the one thing they taught me was people matter. And they took care of everybody, bedside. They didn't, they didn't believe in not taking the time and they, they cared for women. My mother went on to do an awful lot with um, one of the hospitals in Syracuse that did, works with babies babies that are born. My mother went on to work with neonatal and taking care of newborn babies, but she also firmly believed in the right to choose and worked hard with that and worked with Planned Parenthood and stuff in the city of Syracuse. And she taught us as children that everybody has their own rights and their own choices. And I believe that and I taught it to my children. And although I've never had to use that service, I believe in it so strongly. And I have two granddaughters, and I am scared shitless with what they have to grow up in right now. They are one and five, and I don't know what they got to face in this future. So it's important that we're all here, and it's important we're standing up for each other, and it's important I'm seeing the kids here, and I'm thrilled that we're trying to teach the next generation that we have to look out for each other, and we have to stand up for each other, and sometimes holding somebody's hand and just being encouraging is all it takes. And we just gotta keep doing that. We just gotta keep fighting this little fight and that little fight and all of them everywhere just add up and they're so important. And that's all I can say. Hey everyone, uh, quick announcement. I have a lost pair of glasses right here. If you lost your glasses, come and find me. Uh, if you can't see me, I'm wearing weird sunglasses. That's the best way to identify me. All right, I'm going to go pass it along to Shauna. My name is Shauna Hill, and I am a clinical social worker and a mental health professional. I just said I'm, I don't want to get COVID 
from it. <laughs> My name is Shonda Hill. And I, okay, fire. Got it. It does have a bottle It's a little there. tricky. Is that better? Oh, there we go. Okay. My name is Shonda Hill. I am a clinical social worker and a psychotherapist. I specialize in trauma, anxiety, and stress resilience. I've also had an abortion, and this is the first time that I've ever said that out loud. I don't know why. And I came to this work 
because I believed it was the place where I could be part of positive change. And it is hard to be in a position of being able to affect change and not being able to get there. But I know we will get there. And a key way we need to get there is to abolish the filibuster. <laughs> We do. 
We need it to enshrine the freedom and the protections that for over 50 years Vermonters have enjoyed, which is the ability to have reproductive decisions made between the individual and their health care provider and no one else. Keep fighting alongside us. 
Because as I like to say to a lot of young women in particular, women under 35 are the least represented in elected office and the most represented in laws about our bodies. come up here and speak. Anyone. We all have something to say. We all come from a story that led us here. We got somebody right here. <laughs> Let me welcome Valerie, an amazing person who is also going to scream into this megaphone because it is in fact a toy. <laughs> worked together in hospitality years ago and I want to give a shout out to all of the hospitality workers. I know how much you need access to care. I went into this work with all of you in mind. I'm now going to introduce you to Elizabeth who comes from a healthcare background. Thank you. Mother Teresa. <laughs> and I am a mother, and I want to tell you that 
50 years ago, I marched. Yeah. Woo. I, I marched for Roe v. Wade 50 years ago. Woo. And I'm told that we are back in this situation. And it's, it's frightening, it's appalling, and it's dreadful. But there's one thing I want to say is I really truly believe that abortion is not about babies. It's about controlling women. It's about keeping them home and pregnant and fixing dinner for their husbands when they come home. And we're past that. We should be past that. So please, thanks for coming out and support. And I hope we don't have to do this again in another 50 years, but I won't be here, so carry on. <laughs> Margo 
brings up an important reminder. The impact of today's decision on survivors is immense. To anyone that needs support, RAIN. R-A-I-N-N. -N. Also, for survivors who have had abortions and need support, exhale. Look it up. Great places to go to. And here in Burlington, we have Hope Works as well. expand 
those rights. This Supreme Court is the first in our history to take a right away. And as we are here, where the ink is barely dry on that decision by the Supreme Court, at least five states have made abortion completely illegal. That's what happened. So we know the gravity of this. Your presence here is testament to that. This is going to re require citizens to mobilize as you are here today. Because what we have to do in Vermont is pass Proposition 5. And what we have to do in Congress is pass in the Senate. It's been passed in the House. The Women's Health Protection Act. And if the filibuster has to go so we can vote on this in the Senate, then the filibuster has to go. I've heard eloquent statements about the consequences to women. This doesn't end abortion. It ends choice. It creates pain and heartache. It's all completely unnecessary and wrong. Fifty years where women who had to wrestle with the difficult decisions about their reproductive choice could make those on their own, talking with whomever it is they trusted. And how is it that legislatures across this country are going to substitute their will and their judgment for your decision about your body. We know it's wrong. We know it's destructive. And what I want to say is discouraged as we are, don't get angry, mobilize. We in Washington, Bernie and Patrick and I are going to do every single thing we can to get the Women's Health Act protections enacted into law, filibuster has to go. I just got this microphone in my hand. Please remember to turn to one another and offer support and welcome it for yourself. I'm going to pass it along to Matthew. Not every day you get to be the follow-up act for a member of Congress. How cool is that? Thank you, Congressman, for being here. Uh, I would say it's great to be out here with all of you, but it's really not. I wish we could all be at home, but here we are, so let's make the most of it. I am a 17-year-old cisgender male. For those of you that have 17-year-old boys in your lives at one point were, you know that we don't know a lot of stuff. We're not, you know. I know three things. I don't have a uterus, number one. I'm not a medical provider for someone who has a uterus. Because of these two things, it is none of my gosh darn business. Seventeen-year-old teenage boy that I am know this. It is so disgraceful that we have officials in this country that think that it is. We've got people like Mitch McConnell. It's not Mitch's business. Don't boo. Votes. 
It's not Ted Cruz's business. It's not Kevin McCarthy's business. It's not the business of our friends on the Supreme Court. Neil Gorsuch, John Roberts, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, and my personal favorite, Budweiser, I mean Brett Kavanaugh. Oh, Justice Coney Barrett, how could I forget? Thank you, Megan, thank you for that. Um, so, a lot of power reigned against this movement, people that want to control the destinies of people with uteruses, but this is a testament. The marches going on all around the country today are a testament to the fact that we are not going to let that happen. And so, as we go out from here, I want you all to remember the words of the old civil rights hymn, We Shall Not Be Moved. Black and white together, gay and straight together, cis and trans together, young and old together. We shall not be moved like a tree that's planted over troubled waters. We shall not be moved. Thank you very much. that when I got up today and uh, the news came out, the first thing I did was completely ruin my pledge to quit smoking. The second thing I did was make this shirt. The third thing I did was I reached out to everyone uh, uh, that is in my network on Twitter and said, if you're in a state that isn't as friendly as Vermont, how do we help? And so there's a lot of us trying to figure out how to organize. I said, I have a couch. And somebody else said, I have airline miles. So there was a story uh, that came out on NPR this morning when the news first broke about a clinic in Texas where they literally had women in the waiting room and they had to shut the clinic down. These women have scheduled appointments and they are not able to get the health care that they need. So those of us in this wonderful state that are codifying this in the law and are going to codify it in our constitution come November. Let's all think about what we can do to help people with uteruses in other states who need health care. We're figuring it out. But that's something we can all do individually. If you have airline miles to share, if you can pitch in on somebody's road trip to a safe state, please do it. Uh, um, I have no idea what I'm planning to say. I've thought over 10 different things, and I have no idea what's about to come out of my mouth. Um, uh, I am a cis female. I have a uterus. Um, and when I was very little, I swore off sex. I was like, eh, sounds kind of pointless. Um, so I, I'm not religious, I don't have any reason, I just swore that I was going to wait until it was somebody that I really trust, or someone that I really love, someone that I really care about. But that doesn't mean that that's going to happen. Um, I currently have no fear of, oh I need to be safe when I'm having sex, I don't have that fear of, oh god, what if the condom breaks, or what if my birth control doesn't work. Nothing's 100% accurate. But that doesn't mean that some person on the street who doesn't have a uterus is going to think about that when they come up to me. So even though I feel like I'm safe, I'm not. And even though I surround myself with really great um, people, of all genders and sexualities, there are people that I know that I don't trust and make me very nervous. There is one cis male in my school that has threatened my trans male friend many times and has made my entire friend group feel incredibly unsafe and I also found out that he raped one of my classmates. I found that out near the end of the school year, and luckily I didn't have any classes with him at that time. 
but that doesn't mean in the fall that I'm not. So, I don't know what my point is, um, but I know that I'm scared, and I know that anyone who knows me knows that I always have perfect nails, and they are really chipped because I am very anxious today. So, I stand with you! and we can't vote. So please vote for us. Thank you. Your community. Also here in Burlington, Hope Works. Also RAIN, R-A-I-N-N. As well as Exhale, which is a support line for those who have gotten abortions, are seeking abortions, and family and friends of those who have gotten abortions. I'm gonna pass it along to Katie. and I am president of Ask Me 1674, a local union here in Burlington. Now I wanted to come here and speak as a labor leader because let's make no mistake, the Supreme Court's attack on a person's right to control their own body is an attack on workers' rights. Just as we... Just as we in the labor movement reject the notion of the worker devoid of agency as a tool of capital, we also reject the subjugation of anybody with a uterus by the elitist patriarchy. As women and as workers, we must not now nor ever take even one step back from our hard-earned rights without total resistance. In a country where paid parental leave is a luxury, not a guarantee, where the cost of medical care, especially for labor and delivery, can leave families in crippling debt, and where there is no universal subsidized child care, abortion restriction is a working class issue. It's not just an issue, it's an emergency. And any attack on bodily autonomy is an affront to the very idea that we live in a society which values personal liberty and the collective rights of all classes above that of the ruling few. As women, as workers of every gender, and as a labor movement, we must demonstrate in the streets in the factories, in the halls of our government, and in our homes, so that women and trans comrades can achieve true equity and agency in this society we call the United States. Now we might feel safe in our little state of Vermont, but we must demand that the Vermont General Assembly enshrine the right to an abortion in our state's constitution. it along to Beth, who is wearing an absolutely fantastic t-shirt that is 100% today. I'll just give a little plug here for the shirt. Um, Tabitha Moore has these shirts. Fantastic. There's some amazing shirts out there. Go get them because we need them. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Beth Regal. I am the Director of Advocacy at Hope Works. Uh, that we are here for each and every, every one of you. Anyone who is fearful of sexual violence, anyone who has ex been experienced sexual violence, the story that I just heard a couple people in front of me, we're here, okay? Please call, we have a 24 seven hotline. Now I'm gonna go off of the plug and I'm gonna talk about some personal experiences because God damn it, I'm angry. for, you know, I'm 51, going through menopause. My uterus is kind of off-duty these days, but it's still mad, let me tell you. I grew up in the Midwest, 
that was an experience. Um, and today, it brought a lot of triggers back for me. I have friends that are still there in Ohio. I have friends that are still there in Indiana. I have classmates that live in Texas, Florida. Beth, what are we going to do? And part of me is like, thank God I'm in Vermont. But they're not. And I said the same thing that I've heard already. I have a place. I have airline tickets. If anyone needs a vacation, we're close to UVM. And UVM is still continuing to be there for the health care for all of us. When I was living in Tennessee in 1997, I was pregnant. I lost the baby when it was beginning of my second trimester. I wanted that baby more than anything. And it died in utero, which means that the heartbeat stopped and it wasn't delivering on its own. I had to have what is called a planned abortion, a DNC, in order to expel the infant from my, my body. Today, that is going to be illegal in so many places. Today, nobody, Indiana has already started. I received the text as I was heading here. They're already starting, the same as we heard from Texas. Individuals are being shut down from getting the health care they need. We need to stop this. We cannot be complacent anymore. I've had Plan B twice. Why? I have a neuromuscular disease. I was told if I had another baby, I will die. I should have that fucking right to stay alive. In our public transportation into the town, I heard somebody say, and no judgment, no judgment on the bus. I really should go to that today. But thank God I'm in Vermont. And I just really am glad that I'm here in Vermont. And I should go to that, but I'm not going to today. And I wanted to say, and we all need to say, complacency, complacency got us here. We need to vote. So please go and vote. Yes, please, please go and vote. I'm going to keep plugging this, and it might get annoying, but you know what? Too bad. Uh, the Reproductive Liberty Amendment will be on no the November ballot. Please vote yes. We need to show them how it's done. Thanks. I, I wasn't uh, expecting to speak, so I'm just winging it here. But my name is Selena Colburn. I am oh, a former city councilor here in Burlington, a state representative, soon to be a retired state representative. Um, and I'm also the co founder of something called Vermont Access to Reproductive Freedom. otherwise couldn't afford it to access abortion services here in Vermont. Um, want to shout out a huge thanks to the folks who are keeping that work and that organization going. It's incredibly important. Uh, the abortion fund movement is an incredibly important part of the infrastructure that we already need and are going to need more than ever moving forward. So please learn about that work, get involved, donate, volunteer. When we first founded Vermont Access to Reproductive Freedom, there were like three of us and we worked out of my living room. And so I handled the hotline for like a whole bunch of years, which meant that I talked to so many people as they were accessing abortions, struggling, not just accessing abortions, but struggling to access abortions because even when abortion is legal, it's too often not accessible. Um, and people trusted me with their stories. 
And those and stories, stories were so, so individual, individual, so thoughtful, so unique. unique. And, you and you don't have to have, have like a like good story, story to be worthy, worthy of an abortion. I felt so honored that people trusted me with their stories. Um, and, you know, so many of the people we served were already parents and were making this choice so that they could care most effectively for the children they had. And just so many reasons that people, that people made this choice. I've had an abortion, I have my story, I know so many of you have your own story or have loved ones who have stories and I feel pretty defeated today. I'm not gonna lie, I feel really sad. But I can't stop thinking about those stories. And so we can't stop fighting, we can't stop working together to, to turn this around and to fight for our collective rights. And I'll just end by saying emphasis on collective rights because what I learned from those stories is about intersection, about how many other things people were struggling with. I mean, so many people who were struggling to access abortions that I talked to, it was not even the primary crisis in their life. People were experiencing sexual violence, intimate partner violence, deep poverty, um, inability to access other needed health care. The list goes on and on and on. And we are in a moment in this country when we are seeing a kind of doubling down on systematic oppression against women, against LGBTQ plus people, against trans and non-binary people, against black and indigenous and people of color, against people with disabilities. And the work that we need to do to move forward from this moment, I think I'll just end by saying it has to be the work of collective liberation. or it's not a movement worth fighting for. And I'll just end there, but keep fighting, you know, find the love and the work and keep going. All right, y'all, I'm gonna welcome our next speaker, Carly, and their awesome necklace that I can't get over because it's fantastic. It's actually a vape holder. If I'm being honest. Anyway, um, so like a lot of the younger people here, I have been lucky enough to grow up somewhere where my right to reproductive freedom and healthcare has always been guaranteed. I've never worried about it. Um, so when I was 15 years old and I was assaulted, I didn't have to worry about whether or not I was going to get pregnant or whether or not I would be forced to keep it. I knew that I had the choices that I should be allowed to have and that I was in charge of my own body. But what we're really here fighting for is the girls across the country who don't have the same rights that we have here. not had access to health care or a gynecologist they can trust. So what I want to say is that it's really important that we show up um, like all of you have, not for ourselves, but for the people who don't have as many supporters and don't have as much as many people rallying around them. And Lucy Sohn said at a women's convention that Disappointment is the lot of women in religion, in marriage, and in education. And that it was her life goal to deepen this disappointment until no woman will take it any longer. 
And so I think that's really an important message. We can't just keep ignoring what's happening or pretending everything is fine because we look around and we see a Planned Parenthood around the corner because you travel across the country and it's not fine. So keep acting and keep showing up and vote. Vote to pass Prop 5. And so Vermont can be an example for the rest of the country and a leader. Thank you. since I've noticed that this crowd has grown, which I greatly appreciate. The solidarity feels amazing and was much is much needed today. The grounds here, um, which is owned by the Unitarian Universalist Church that I'm standing on, have they have been so generous to let us be here today. Please be respectful of this space. Please clean up after yourself and please do not litter. I'm gonna pass it along to Kaya. So I'm just going to share something that I wrote this morning when I found everything out. It's a little bit of a, of, of a different vibe, I guess, than what's been going on, but I'm going to share it anyway. Reasons behind Gen Z's apathy toward the United States of America. Many of us were born during the height of 9-11 and years immediately following that, we came into the world during a time of chaos. Then the recession of 2008 happened and many of us watched our parents or friends' parents lose jobs and suffer financial crisis. Finally time for us to go to school and we have to practice lockdowns because school shootings are a normalcy. The government hasn't done anything to protect us. Growing up, we watch our country become more polarized and our government fall into a state of debilitating feedback loops, preventing any sort of progress in any direction. Meanwhile, the world is literally on fire and our government ignores the words of world-renowned scientists in the name of profit and greed while we suffer the consequences. Marginalized communities continue to be targeted by law enforcement without any government protection, police brutality, people of the LGBT community are, to are being told that they're pedophiles and corrupting children, their rights to certain types of healthcare are being taken away, there's a literal insurrection attempt to overthrow the government, the mishandling of coronavirus, the hundreds of thousands of deaths that could have been prevented by stopping the spread of misinformation, and reproductive rights are hanging by a fucking thread, Roe v. Wade is overturned. I'm so overwhelmed, and I'm so tired, and, and there are so many things, there are so many things to be angry about that I don't know where to put my fucking energy into being angry, so I'm numb to it all. But like, nonetheless, we need to continue fighting. We have to continue fighting, and I believe in us as a generation. I believe in us as a generation because we are fed up with the bullshit. We have seen the government not work in our favor, and we are like, look, this is not working. We have to change it. That's going to be us. We are going to make that change because we have seen that it does not work. So we need to keep advocating for ourselves and for other people. And even though we are so tired that we're screaming at a fucking brick wall and nothing is changing, even though we're tired, we need to keep on going. We need to stop complacency. We need to open everybody else's eyes and show them, hey, this shit is happening. You need to care about it. And we need to vote like our lives are Because humans need to human. Um, the bathrooms 
in the church are accessible. If you go to the side door, please be respectful. There are people working in there, so tr please try, try, blah, blah, blah. Tree, oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> Wow. wow. All right, I welcome Avery. Avery. Woo. Everything, Everything they just they said. said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so I, uh, I, my name's Avery. Avery. I'm 21. Um, I don't know if you guys saw what one of the Supreme Court justices said after overturning this decision, um, but uh, Supreme Court Thomas uh, is interested in overturning more of our rights. This is uh, just the beginning of what they're hoping to do. They're also hoping to, or at least this one, is hoping to get rid of contraceptives and same-sex relationships and marriage. And that is unacceptable. How did we get here? Um, we need to show them that this is not okay. Um, and we didn't get a choice to vote in Roe v. Wade getting overturned, but we can vote on our local level, um, and we can donate to causes that are going to help. But most importantly, we need to be there for each other, and we need to take, we need to not take our um, state as a place of refuge for granted. We need to utilize it to be helping people coming in from other states who need that help. Thank you all. Thank you for showing up. And a reminder that the refuge that is the state, it's never a guarantee. You have to fight for it. Show up this November and vote for the Reproductive Liberty Amendment. If I'm annoying you, I'm doing my job right. <laughs> I'm going to invite now Camille and Rowan, who both have amazing shirts on that I think y'all should clap for. Unfortunately, today has less rights than I did when I was her age. Um, I am a mad woman, I am a mother, I am a queer woman, and my son, who is sitting right here today, would not be alive if it wasn't for the abortion I had of the baby I lost before him. Neither of us would be alive if it was for that. Look at that child. Emmy, look up. My name is Rowan, and um, um, you got it. What do you want to say? You want to tell them that you love them. What do you want to say? No. <laughs> Rowan said she might be a little nervous, and I said, just standing up here, baby, that is all you got to do. She says, you have the right to ha not have a baby if you don't want to because it's your body. Trisha, did I get that right? Okay, sorry, I'm going through a lot of names. Y'all are amazing. So, my name is Trisha, and I am a religious person. I am a person of faith who absolutely defends and fights for reproductive justice. I have the honor of serving the congregation that meets here, the Unitarian Universalist Society. There are many Unitarian Universalist congregations around the country who also support a woman's right to 
freedom and choice. There are many other congregations of other flavors that also care about and fight for reproductive freedom. I'm not here to defend religion today, but I do want to talk about faith. Because while we have all kinds of different understandings of what we might call God, many of us share a faith in humanity. We share a faith in women. We share a faith in love and justice and mercy. And that's what moves us to do things like show up today. So I came up here because I wanted to invite you to just turn for a second and look at the beauty and the wonder of these people, of all of you. Because whoever it was that talked about collective liberation, that is the only way. That is the only way through to love and justice is if we work together. Vermont and I am intimately familiar with Middlebury's Planned Parenthood. When I was 13 I was diagnosed with endometriosis and let me tell you I have never loved my busted uterus more than I do today. It is unlikely that I will ever be able to carry a pregnancy to term and that is okay with me. I have also been to Middlebury's Planned Parenthood many, many times to purchase Plan B and pregnancy tests for friends who were too religious and too scared to go uh, purchase those themselves. I have driven friends to get abortions because they didn't feel comfortable asking their parents. I got a call this May from my mom who still lives in Middlebury and she said Middlebury's Planned Parenthood is closing. They don't have enough money to stay open. So as much as I would like to tell you to have hope, I am here to tell you to be scared. As safe as we feel in Vermont, if you do not continue to donate, if you do not continue to fight, we are in danger of losing the freedom that we have here. People in Middlebury now have to drive at least an hour to access that care, and that is just awful. It's awful that that clinic could not stay open, and so I'm telling you now, it's time to listen to our elders, it is time to turn to people of color, to career activists who have been doing this work for so, so long, who know how to do this professionally. It is time to get angry. And I'm not contoning violence, because legally I don't think that I can do that. However, I am saying if your reaction to this is violence, that is understandable. This Supreme Court ruling is a violation of our bodies. It is a violation of our rights and of our freedoms of being American. Get angry. it along to you. And you know what, honestly, if I forget your name, I'm so freaking sorry. Um, Catherine. Catherine. Catherine, we're passing along to Catherine. Hi. Um, like she said, my name is Catherine. I'm 16. Oh god, I'm nervous. Um, <laughs> you got it. before I stepped up here, don't worry. Um, like I said, I'm 16 and I have been lucky enough that growing up, I my body has been my business. I haven't been violated in any way. I, I, my body has been mine and I'm lucky for that. But because I'm now 16, I have begun to realize that not everybody seems to agree that my body's not my business. That my body is my business. Not everyone agrees that my body's my business. Can't talk. <laughs> I have realized the older I've gotten that there have been more and more threats to my bodily autonomy as a woman, especially as a queer woman. I'm lucky enough to know that because I'm a queer woman, I probably won't need to worry about a consensual encounter leading to an unplanned pregnancy, but that's given it's consensual. I realized growing up 
It won't always be consensual. There are chances that the man following me on the street is going to actually do something. That the man who's following me before he realizes that I'm with my dad and he, I'm not alone will do something to me when he catches up. It's, a, it's grown into a fear and I've realized now that it needs to be a fear. I started work today at 10 o'clock, which is when it was announced. So I haven't really had a lot of time to process this emotionally because I've been working all day at a retail store. Um, but I found out about this event happening over social media and I thought there's not going to be a lot of people there. There's maybe going to be 10 because it was so short notice. It was today that this event was planned. So showing up and seeing everybody here, it was a bit of a shock, a positive shock. Um, and I remembered while I was here, this isn't the only event that's happening right now. There are others in other towns where other people are congregating to do exactly what we're doing here. As lo alone as I may feel in this situation, I'm not, I realized. I'm with everybody here and everybody in all those other towns who are doing the exact same thing that we are. I've got half the earth. <laughs> More than half the earth, I've got every transgender woman, every transgender man. I've got the support of the men who are here, the cis men who are here to support the women in their lives. It, we're not alone in this. And that's a, that means a lot. It's not an issue of religion or of politics or of anything else. It's a matter of bodily autonomy at its most basic level. It should be our choice, obviously. <laughs> So yeah, I think that's basically all I have to say. So anyway, yeah, don't be afraid to like get out there and talk about it, I guess. Because it's obvious that we shouldn't have to be here, but we are, and we've got literally everyone on our side. So get loud, be do something about it. We got a good line of people showing up here um, to speak, and I love it because uh, this is about the community, and we want to hear from you. So I'm going to welcome up Carly and their exciting crock shoes because I love that color. And yes, I do compliment people on what they wear because I take notice of that all the time. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I just want to express my gratitude for this community and everyone showing up today. Um, I am a queer woman and an early educator in the state of Vermont. I want to clear up a misconception about what this ruling is about. They say that this ruling is about children. If this ruling was about children, I wouldn't be buying bulk Cheerios from Costco to feed my kids. set up for success. If this ruling were about children, we would be investing care in the foster system, which I have seen fail. I've seen mothers and fathers who are tired. They come in and drop off their kids, and I look at them and I say, are you okay? This is not about the children. If this were about children, we would be doing more. It is ridiculous that I make fourteen fifty an hour to raise the future generations. It is ridiculous that they disguise their religion as... Sorry, I'm losing my train. I'm so angry. Um, illusion that they are building to convince people that they care for children. They don't. They don't care for children at all. And the next step is targeting queer people. And then after that, it's people of color. And we need to step up. And as angry as I am, I still have faith that we can change things. I 
am so proud of all the people here who have showed up to fight for something that is wrong to be changed. Um, I really urge people just, you know, take care of yourself, but also check in on the women and queer people in your life. Check in on those people who may be affected by this because they don't want us to come together. They are trying to drive us apart, so we're weak, but we are strong. and commit to each other. This is going to be a long road. Now I'm going to make, welcome up, Megan. Goodness, the tripping over the words, it's real. I want to thank Hannah. <laughs> She's good with names and good with words, by the way, and I like her t-shirt, too. My name is Megan Emery, and I'm a professor at UVM. I'm also a city councilor in South Burlington. And I have no power over the law, unfortunately. But what I can say is that it's Katie, who is president of the local union that got me up here that wanted to speak. And why is that? It's because she really focused me. I have been feeling more and more angry about Justice Coney Barrett. And why? Because she's a privileged woman who, because of her privilege and education, she took her power and did not pay it forward she had all those women behind her who made sure that she had all the opportunities and privileges that she was born with, just like I was. I was born in 1969. I'm turning 53 this summer, and it's my turn to pay it forward because this generation is not going to have the rights that my generation had, and that is wrong. And I, I'll be perfectly honest, I've never had an abortion, although some would say that the morning after pill is an abortion, so if that's the technicality, I have had an abortion. I have to say that I was able to get the morning after pill after a condom with a consensual partner broke because I was in France. It was before it became available in the United States, and I got to experience what a liberated country does for its women, which is provide productive health care. I also want to say that I relied on contraception, and that's what they might go after as well. I took the pill, I had an IUD three times, and now I have the magic menopause, right? Nothing can hurt me now. So, why am I here? Because at UVM, last year, we had to explain the asterisk. Why am I here? It's because I have teenage and young 20-year-olds in my office explaining to me what happened to them and their friends and how unfair it is that they are faced with a system that is forcing them to face the accuser and then now we're faced with laws that will not only force victims to face the accuser but not allow them to get the help in the privacy that they deserved. I just broke the privacy that I have held for 30 years. There you are. What to do? Yes, mobilize and be smart and run for office. Why did I run for office? And this is another story. It's because my son, who now is 21, and is, I, Matthew, you're awesome. He knows Matthew. <laughs> he was in a home care situation where the husband was found to be guilty of molesting one of the little girls in this home care situation. All right? And I said, I'm going to city council. We need to do something for our young people and our children. So Carly, I'm with you. Yes, those early childhood educators, you are the foundation. So go. Go to the city council. Go to the state legislature. Go to Washington, D.C. and Montpelier. But also think about what you can do. Can you run for office? Can you be an educator? Can you empower young women and men to do what's right for all of you? And I love the notion of collective liberation as well. So Celine, I've always admired you. 
I just want to thank everybody who's spoken. It takes bravery, but this is the time for it. We are courageous. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. I'm going to pass it along to Kate. Hi everybody, my name is Kate Cross, and I'm a stress crier, so forgive me. I'm here with two messages for you tonight. One is, obviously get angry, we'll get to that. But the second one is to remind you that abortion isn't just about choice. Sometimes, like for people like me, it's about losing a pregnancy and protecting yourself and your family so that you can continue to be a mom. My glorious son is here tonight, and I'm here because, I'm here to speak to you because I was saved by an abortion when I lost a pregnancy. And clearly that is still painful 12 years later, but my son is here with a mom because of that. So thank you, healthcare workers. More importantly than my story, more importantly than my story, is to use what privilege, even if it's giving 50 cents, even if it's donating your time if you don't have money. Give, help other women, Help people who need reproductive freedom get to the places where they can get them. But also, run for fucking office and change the shit. Got two people in a row uh, call for people to run for office. For my anarchist uh, comrades out there, that translates to infiltrate the system. I want to make sure that I know you're out there and love you so freaking much. I'm going to pass it along to Eva. My name is Eva Frazier. I am a recent high school graduate from CBU High School. I'm 18 years old. Um, and in March, I participated in this scholarship program called the U.S. Senate Youth Scholarship Program. And it brings together two politically engaged students from each state, D.C., and the Department of Defense Education Activity. Um, and I'm sharing with you, this with you because for the first time, I made a lot of friends who live outside of Vermont and outside of New England. And today, when um, the decision on dogs was released, I had the unique horror of watching some of my now closest friends, who are all political junkies, um, dissect the wording and legal ramifications of this case ruling, but also understanding the horrific reality that of the 104 delegates that served with me, 65 could one day become pregnant, and now approximately half of us have lost this right. And as much grief as I felt at approximately 10:20 when I checked my phone, I know that my friends in states where they have now lost their constitutional right to their bodies have felt so much more. So I just want to say that it is incredibly important that we in Vermont vote to protect our right to abortion, but also use our privilege of being in a state that prioritizes human rights to support those who are not that lucky. And my parents always say, oh, Eva, you're on your phone too much. You're on social media too much. Social media is destroying your generation. And yes, I think that is true in part. But social media has a really unique opportunity here. This weekend, I plan to regroup with the activists I've been lucky to get to know and plan to coordinate online efforts to raise mutual aid and to work with mutual aid groups that are already working to connect people um, from one state to another where abortion is now illegal. And I urge you to join me in this. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to pass along to you, Celeste. I got Celeste. Sorry about that. <laughs> 
thank you, uh, future Supreme Court Justice Eva. She's a good friend of mine. I'm um, going to Harvard, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not to flex because she won't. Um, my name is Celeste. I'm 18 years old. I am a recent graduate of Rice Memorial High School. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I came up here to say I am a daughter of an immigrant. My mom came to this country from Cuba with her two sisters and her mom, my grandmother, and she fought to come here, and she fought for the freedom to be here. And my Abu, right now, I know is turning in her grave because this is not what we want, and this is not what we deserve. And the fact that I woke up today and I received a text from my cousin asking me, have you seen the news? And I knew exactly what he meant is not something that an 18 year old should experience. And it's not something that any of us should experience. The fact that our rights are being taken away is heartbreaking. And the fact that I'm going to a school in the South where I know my rights are no longer going to be given to me breaks my heart, but I'm not done and I will not be silenced. women in the state that I'm going to, and we will march, and we will demand the rights that we deserve. Thank you. I just want to give a shout out to all the Catholics out there who are in support of reproductive rights. Um, I was raised in a strict Catholic household, and I carry so much of what I learned into my work and in my passion and the compassion that I show for so many people. So just know that because you're Catholic does not mean that you can't be for choice. Catholics for Choice is an amazing organization. Look them up. I'm going to pass it along to Eva. Hello, I am so proud to be speaking to all of you today. Um, I want to talk about how the things that we're talking about have been ruled illegal. And in the states where they are illegal, you need to take precautions when you're at protests like these. Um, if you take your phone, then uh, that phone is tracking your location, and anybody who has access to your phone can know where you were, and they could know that you were at a protest. Also, if you have any period tracking apps in states, where abortion is illegal, people can steal the information off of those period tracking apps and use it as evidence that you may want an abortion. And I would encourage you to delete those apps and keep yourself safe. Also, if you upload any um, pictures or videos from these uh, protests onto social media, um, first off, Blur out any faces in those photos and videos, especially if you are in a state where abortion is illegal. And um, if you upload a photo, make sure to take a screenshot of it. When you take a photo, it records the information of where you took the photo, on what phone you took it, and um, what time you took it. And if you take a screenshot, it erases that metadata. So make sure to upload that screenshot and make sure to keep yourself safe as we fight for the rights of everybody. All right, so we got five speakers left. I'm gonna welcome up Susan. Hello, I'm Susan, and I so appreciate such wonderful voices from young people who are here today. And I know what I want to say is what he said, what she said, what she said, because it's been wonderful. I'm not young, I'm old. Uh, like Trisha, I'm religious. I wore this outfit because I'm professionally religious, and I'm retired, and now I'm a, a lesbian mother Vermont vegan organic hemp farmer. My daughter's 21 and my son is 15. But what I want to say in my religious um, place is this, just a few things. Everyone here 
is created absolutely worthy. Number one. Number two, everyone here has moral agency and competency. And number three, no state can rise anywhere near the moral competency of every, competency of every single woman as she faces her health decisions around her re reproductive life. Absolutely. I was 20 years old when the Supreme Court granted me the right to have that absolute agency over my own body. And today I talk to my 21-year-old daughter who doesn't. So I want to say, like he says, like she says, like she said, fight, donate, vote. We have to make this difference for all of us. Thank you, Susan. to talk but being here for like what an hour some change I've seen more white men up here than I have black women violence against black women in the medical field is unmatched and it's nice to hear oh let's listen to people of color let's listen to this but I just want you to actually start doing it thank you she, her, and every time I get up on a stage on a protest, I hope I don't have to do it again. Each time, I just feel slightly more disappointed by the inaction of government to help keep us safe. I always hear the sentiment vote, which I very much believe in, but also I believe in the fact that voting isn't enough. money that I don't use to, you know, feed myself. I, uh, I donate to mutual aid programs because there's so many much, there's so much people more that need it than I do. And I may seem apathetic and it's not that I'm not disappointed or I'm not angry or upset. I'm just not surprised anymore. Each time this happens, I get less and less surprised of what's happening. It's just that they don't seem to care. I, we have a majority in the House and the Senate, and our president is a Democrat. They had time to codify this, but they didn't. As much as we hear, as much as we hear, don't stay complacent. The people that we look to to protect us have stayed complacent, and they don't seem to want to change that. It, it makes me angry. We vote to put them in power, and then what? Yeah, that's all we get. All they want is power, and they don't care what they have to do to get it. And that is so fucking sad. Thank you, Aria. I'm gonna pass it along to Jasmine. Hello. I'm Jasmine. My mom spoke like about a lost count ago. And yeah, first off, corroborate her story of the whole, well, I wouldn't be here if she didn't have access to an abortion 24, 25 years ago. So, and last I checked, Tennessee is probably one of those states that will ban it. So, yeah, there's that. Also, I'm standing here as a trans person. The one day I'll ever say that I'm glad that I'm a woman without a uterus, give it three days, probably will take that back. Because, well, look at Texas, look at Florida, look at, yeah. So, 
and it's just like... Graduate from UVM, so many protests, so many protests, because it's just not... What is... Uh, what am I doing? Like, why is nothing happening? Like... And I corroborate everyone else my age's story and 21, so everyone else my age's and younger story of just the apathy of being a young person in this country. Like, yeah. Like, first thing I saw when I saw the news was just like, eh, okay, I'm not surprised and disappointed, but yeah. Like, why am I not surprised about this? Why is... Uh, it's just it's annoying. Just look around. Look at all of us. We're all people here. No one person here is less than another. So just look around at everyone's community. And lastly, I'll reiterate, got a condo, got airline tickets, like, like just, just, we should, we should all, all like, like, for anyone in a state, for anyone who needs a vacation to Vermont for whatever reason, like, and also for my family, for my friends who are in states that aren't as progressive as Vermont, just how do we comfort people knowing their reality sucks? And lastly, complacency. We cannot be complacent. Not everyone in Germany was a Nazi. So we cannot enable it any longer. We should vote. We should run if we can. And just that's it. Thank you so much, Jasmine. And yes, vote. And once again, I'm going to say the annoying thing. Vote for the Reproductive Liberty Amendment on November 8th. I want you dreaming my words tonight, folks. I'm going to pass it along to MK. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is MK. I recently moved back from New Hampshire about a week ago. Great timing, I got to say. <laughs> um, not going to lie, I'm a little so bear with me. Um, the first, the first thing, thing that I thought of when I saw that the, that the Supreme Court, Court overturned Roe over Wade is, oh my god, it's part of my vision. My, my friends in New Hampshire, Hampshire what, what are they going to do? do? Because New Hampshire is, they might or already have passed a law saying you cannot get an abortion if you're about 15 weeks. And I was just so scared for them. I know being in Vermont, I am protected. But we need to help them. And I, I said, guys, please come to Vermont. And this is just a great place. I am so glad to be back. And I just love it here. Yeah. My body, my choice. Thank you so much, MK. All right, well, my name is Hannah Brisbane. My pronouns are they, them. I'm the Northern Vermont organizer for Planned Parenthood Vermont Action Fund. That's my uh, colleague, Eileen Chapman, my friend. As well as the Northern Vermont organizer for Vermonters for Reproductive Liberty, which is for the Reproductive Liberty Amendment. Um, I shared this earlier, but some of you may be new, and I think it's important to share stories. Shout out to those that did, and shout out to those that just feel like they can't do that right now. Much, much respect, respect to you to as well. well. Um, um, I'm queer, I'm non-binary, I've, I've had two abortions. abortions. My, my first, first one being a medication abortion in my early 20s, 20s I consider one of my best decisions in my life. life. My, my second, second one being, being a second, second trimester, trimester abortion, abortion due, due to a non-viable pregnancy. pregnancy. Every, Every pregnancy, pregnancy is unique, unique. and I, I will not generalize, generalize anybody because I know it puts them at harm's way. I just want to remind you all to I might cry. Um, it's okay. You can do it. Um, this is going to be an extremely difficult and long road. It's not going to be easy at all. 
and the Reproductive Liberty Amendment, though we need to pass this spectacularly and show them how it's done, it is the basement. It is not even close to the ceiling. We really are going to kind of be starting over, but we have opportunity here. And the only way that we can do this and really harness this opportunity is to do it together. So I ask you all to really embrace one another, to commit to yourself and to each other, and honestly, please, 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 please find peace and good in your night. This was an extremely difficult day, and it's going to keep coming in waves, and you're going to experience a lot. Seek your support system, seek your resources, and stay together. Have a wonderful night, folks. Thank you for coming out.